Hello, in this course I'm going to talk about data structures and algorithms. Data structure and algorithm are very important in our uh, life. So in every computer science curriculum there should be one course about data structures and algorithms. Data structure algorithm actually it's improve the quality of life, it change our life as we will see in the applications, it's even save lives. So let us take some applications of data structure and algorithm and understand why we are studying data structures and algorithm. If we want to open a file without data structure, we will not be able to open any file in the computer. Why is that? Because the data of the file is stored in a certain structure. We need to open the file to read this data in a certain structure so that we can open this file like a video file or image file or so on. Another application of that structure and algorithm when you look up a contact in your telephone. So you have a lot of numbers, a lot of contact number stores in your phone and you are searching for a specific one. For that you need all the contact to be stored in a data structure and then you want to do some operation on this data which is the search operation so with with that with the help of data structure and algorithm you can easily search for one contact in your mobile phone another application for the data structure and algorithm when you log in to any social media or to any website or to any account, you enter the login information, the username and the password, and then the system will try to search for your account and will try to match your password to see if your password is correct or not. Without data structure and algorithm, we will not be able to do that. Google search. So Google search give us a big benefit to search any term and get the result in less than one second. Okay. For example, if I search Google search, I'm getting 25 billion page results in less than one second. Without data structures, and without efficient algorithm, this will not be a possible. This will take just hours to find, to search all this huge amount of pages. So another application of data structure and algorithm is the medical rec records. If someone wants to the hospital and he needs emergence treatment, it's very easy using data structure and algorithm to find his record very fast. Imagine we cannot find his record very fast and then this delay may be very risky in this case to his life. So we need the efficiency. We need efficient algorithms. We need efficient data structure because we use them a lot and we need the result very fast. So let, let us take the Google search as example. In Google search, in the web, we have around 35 trillion pages. So 35,000 billion pages in the internet. And when we write a keyword, we need to search all these pages to get the best result out of this these three, five, trillion pages but our processor is only one gigahertz processor one gigahertz so it could be like four gigahertz eight gigahertz processor around this it's not far from this but let's say it's it's very close to one gigahertz processor one gigahertz processor means the processor can perform around one billion instruction per second it's a big number but still if we don't have efficient way to search, then we need at least 35,000 seconds, which means I need 
nine hours. If I want to do some traditional search, to search all the pages on the internet to find my keyword, I need like around 35,000 seconds, nine hours. But this is like very slow. This is very slow for to get the search result. But using data structures, smart data structures, and using efficient algorithm, Google was able to get all the result in less than one second. So, how can using data structure and algorithm be applied in one second per search? How is that possible? Because of the smart data structures and because of the efficient algorithm. Let's take an example, programming example, just to show how the, this efficiency thing work. Imagine I have a Java program. In this, I have array. I created array. The size of this array is 300,000. Okay, it's not a big number compared to our big data what we have these days. So we created array of integer of size 300,000. Okay, and then we fill this array with a random numbers between z between uh, zero and uh, 300,000 okay so we just fill this array with random values so this loop will fill the array with the random values there is a method in a class called array is to sort this array to sort the array in an in an decreasing order so it starts from the one two three and so on after we sort that we print done with the array so i already prepared the array so i have array of values of random values three hundred thousand values in this array and it's sorted and now Imagine this is like the values I want to search in. So I have these values and I want to search in these values. Let, let, let me assume I want to do 300,000 search. Like imagine this array, like an example just. These are the pages we want to search. And there are 300,000 people are looking for uh, to search for a certain number in, in these pages so I make a for loop 300,000 times every time I search I call a method called find one so this is find one I give find one the array and a value I want to search for this array and there is a loop looking for this array if i find this array i will return the index if i look in all the elements in it, of the array and i didn't find the value i just return minus one okay so this is the find operation and this is the traditional search okay so again to summarize we have an array we created array we fill the array with random values we sorted the array, we printed done with the array, and then we try to perform searches on a different values, okay? We don't print the output, I just want to see how much does it take to finish this loop, okay? So this loop will be performed 300,000 times, because 300,000 search, and the search I do, it's just it's called linear search for every value I go to the array and look to this value in all the element of the array unless I found it okay so let let us run the code and see how much does it take it's done with the array very fast and now the computer is trying to to do this loop to find all the values in the array.
So we will see how much does it take. It's taking a lot of time. As you see, it's taking 22 seconds. Okay. So it's in, in the computer, this is like very slow. But what if I did something else? I have another function called find2. Okay, the same input, integer array and a number. I want to search a number in array. There is smart search algorithm. It's called binary search. It's already implemented in Java. So I want to use that search instead of the traditional search what I did here. So this is like smart search. This like doesn't compare every value of the array. It just go to the middle of the array. If the value is more than the value in the middle, then I go to the second half of the array. So I don't compare with every value. So this is just a smart way of search. We will take this uh, algorithm in details. We'll study it in details later. Let's see if I use find2 instead of find1. So find1, it took me 22 seconds. If I use find2, then it took me nothing, like zero seconds. So you can see, if you have a smart implementation of the same algorithm, if you have a smart algorithm to do the same problem or to solve the same problem, you could have much better time. And imagine this number is just like 3 million or 3 billions, then it will take years using the traditional way, but it will just take few seconds if I use the smart way. So this shows us the importance of data structures and algorithms. In this course, we will take like different kind of data structures, something called the stack, queue, priority queue, trees, and graphs, and others, okay? Let's start with the stack. What is the stack? Stack is just a data structure. Data structure means a place where you can store data. So it's like array. Array is a data structure. So it's a place where we can store data. So stack is a data structure and it has this property, the last in, first out. So this is like a stack. A stack has one value of one. If I added a new value, or I called I push new value, the two will come here. If I push another three, it will come here. If I push another value like four, it will come here. If I push, so it's like I'm adding value in the top of each other, okay? And now I push six, six will be in the top, okay? Now if I want to remove from this, should I remove one or six? So the stack tell me the last n, the last n was six. It should become the first out. So it will come out first. So the, if I did pop, bobs means you remove the value. You will remove the value from the top, not from the bottom. And if you did bob again, you will remove the next value to it, like the five, four, and three, and so on. So it, you enter the values and you try to remove the values in the opposite order, something like this. So that's why it's called last in, first out. And we have the operation for the stack is the push and the bob. Okay, push, if you add one value, you will add it in the top of the other values. Pop, you will remove the value in the top of the values. One application for this is to reverse a word or reverse a sentence. Let us take an example. So here I have a small example. The program asked me to enter the sentence. I will write, hello, I am enjoying data structures 
okay so this is the sentence I enter if I make enter then I get the reversed sentence so structures data enjoying am I hello okay so I reverse the sentence using the stack let let us see how this happens we import Java to scanner just for the input we import there is a class called stack in Java okay so there is some stack we can use in Java but we will learn in this course also how to implement it so this is the main method we define the scanner scanner as C so new scanner equals to new scanners system dot out dot print enter a sentence and then here we read from the user we read the input and we store it in the variable s and here we created a new stack called a and here we st we we split the w w the string into words we split the sentence into words and we store it in uh, array of strings and then we go word by word we push in it in the stack okay so here we will come to hello we will push it in the stack and then we come to I we push it in the stack so I will be in the top hello will be in the bottom again um we will push um will be the top enjoying the top data will be the top of enjoying structure will be the top of data so we, I'm pushing values in the stack and then I do another for loop to bob the values if I want to bob what is the last element that was added to the stack structures so the first word to be bobbed is structure that's why it's the first word to be printed and then data and then enjoying and then um and then I and then hello so this shows us one application of the stack we have many data structure and we will study them uh, later i hope this was clear and see you in the next video